football. But they were healthy, happy, and clearly the team to beat. Meanwhile, the battered Celtics endured a seemingly endless series of wars back east. Drained by fatigue and devastated with injuries, the proud champions rose from the ashes in an inspiring display of courage. Now, they bring those scars to the biggest battle of all, the NBA Finals. It's that time of year, and tonight a new chapter unfolds in one of the sport's classic rivalries. It's the Lakers and the Celtics tangling again. Fans in this sprawling metropolis have frequently been portrayed as blasé, even laid back, if you will. But one team has turned this all around. It is the pro basketball team that plays inside the Forum here in Inglewood, California. The Los Angeles Lakers are shooting for their fourth championship in this decade, and they have turned on Southern California like no team in recent memory. CBS Sports welcomes you to the 1987 NBA Finals. We are ready for round one. The defending champion Boston Celtics against the Los Angeles Lakers from the Forum. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. I guess it's sort of like inviting two very good and familiar friends back to the championship, the Lakers and the Celtics. And I couldn't help but think about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as he checked into work here earlier this evening. Here's a man at the age of 40, still at the peak of his career, coming for his eighth NBA final. Meanwhile, over in that Celtic locker room, that young man right there, Connor Henry, he was seven years old when Kareem first played at the National Basketball Association with the Milwaukee Bucks. How dominant have these two franchises been in the National Basketball Association? Well, they have played for the title 40 times, and either the Lakers or the Celtics, well, they have won it a total of 25 times. Now, let's get out to the two gentlemen who are going to call the action for you in this year's final. Dick Stockton and Tommy Heinsohn. Dick. Thank you very much, Brent. This is really not your typical L.A. Boston matchup because for the first time in that recent rivalry, we have a clear cut favorite, and that's the Lakers. In fact, L.A. has really been the team to beat this year ever since they beat a healthy Boston Celtic team twice in the regular season. That's where we stand going in. Tommy, one aspect of this series going in is the fact that the Lakers have had eight days of a layoff after eliminating Seattle, and Boston has really been continuing playing even though they have struggled to win two series. Well, timing is so crucial for any team that wants to upbeat and up-tempo the game. And it really shows itself in how crisp the passing is and how on target they are. I think Pat Riley knows how to deal with that. They should be well into this series. The extra couple of days off really allowed the Celtics to get their heads out of one series and into this series. I think they'll be ready. All right, the walking wounded continue for the Celtics, but their big problem, how are they going to offset the tremendous speed advantage that the Lakers have? It's going to be a delay, delay, delay the advance of the ball any way you can. It's going to require Robert Parrish and Kevin McHale to really exert some sprinting effort getting back on defense. And Larry Bird has to play really smart knowing when to rebound and when to get back. You know, Tommy, a lot of people didn't think the Celtics would get even this far. In fact, history will show us that those teams that have had to play back-to-back seven-game series to get to the finals have had a very short time in the finals of course you notice this is the first time the Celtics have been there but basically Brent it's long odds for the Boston Celtics all the way around well indeed those odds are very long Dick because over in Las Vegas the Lakers have been installed as a 10 point favorite in game one never in recent memory can I recall a Celtic team ever being a 10 point underdog in a championship game of course you should remember that in Las Vegas marvelous Marvin Hagler was installed as a prohibitive choice over Sugar Ray Leonard, and we all know what happened that night. So the drama begins to unfold here at the Forum in Inglewood. Coming up, it'll be game one between the Celtics and the Lakers. CBS Sports coverage of the 1987 NBA Finals is sponsored by Miller Genuine Draft. Cold filtered draft beer. It's as real as it gets. Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? And by Allstate, leave it to the good hands people to ensure your home, your car, or your family. You're in good hands with Allstate. We're back at the forum, and right now, let's go over to the public address announcer, Lawrence Tanner, for the introduction of this evening's starting lineup. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to game one of the 1987 NBA Finals. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Eastern Conference champions, the Boston Celtics. At guard, in his 
sixth season from Brigham Young, number 44, Danny Ames. Also in guard in his 11th season from Pepperdine, number three, Dennis Johnson. At center in his 11th season from Centenary, double zero, Robert Parrish. Forward in his seventh season from Minnesota, number 32, Kevin McHale. And at forward in his eighth season from Indiana State, number 33, Larry Bird. The head coach for Boston in his fourth season is KC Jones. And now let's meet the 1987 Western Conference champion, the Los Angeles Lakers. At four, in his fifth season from North Carolina, number 42, James Worthy. Also at four, in his second season from Oregon State, number 45, A.C. Green. At guard, in his fourth season from Arizona State, number four, Byron Scott. Guard in his eighth season from Michigan State, number 32, Urban Magic Johnson. And at center in his 18th season from UCLA, the captain, number 33, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The head coach for the Lakers in his sixth season, Pat Riley. This has indeed been a storied rivalry, as Brent touched on at the top of the program. Amazingly, 25 of 40 NBA titles won by one of these teams. The Celtics have dominated the series, and the last time and the only time the Lakers won was in 85. And ironically enough, Tommy, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who we saw come on in tonight, said that the idea of the rivalry with the Boston Celtics ended with that 85 Laker triumph. He said the coast was dead at Boston Garden. I don't know if that's the case. Well, I think the Celtics kind of felt the same way last year when uh, the Lakers were knocked out by the Rockets, and they thought that Kareem probably would not be able to play anymore, and yet, here the both of them are. The officials for tonight's first game are Jake O'Donnell and Hugh Evans and Jeff Kersey.